You time out the threats from the mid morning hours and beyond. That's right. The Weather Channel going to be extending our live programming to make sure that your family has the information that you need to stay safe as we, of course, continue to track the issues there in the West. That is uh, not something going anywhere anytime soon. And then we'll be watching how everything translates off towards the east. So impacts for the rest of the nation as we head on through this week. Yeah, we've got severe weather chances this week, snow chances later this week, too. We'll show you where. As the waters rise, being from there, and Jim, um, you know, different story today. It looks like a lot of your rain is now pushed in. So what are you dealing with right now there in Capitola? Yeah, it's chilly, Jen, um, this morning. It, it, it's like we've had a cold front come through, uh, and, and there's a little bit of a wind. Every single big storm that we've had in here actually is some strong winds. And, and yesterday and even today's storms, a little bit windier because now we've got some convection or thunderstorms associated with it as well. Let's look at some of the reports. Scotts Valley, we had a tree down blocking both lanes. The telephone power wires are down in the roadway there. Um, a couple of reports coming in from Scotts Valley. Down in Aptos here, now this is to the east of Santa Cruz, tree down across both lanes. And Felton, the poor community that keeps getting affected by um, really the brunt of the systems now we've had flooding in the roadway trees and wires down in the road and that's the case again this morning here not flooding as much as the trees and wires down because of the wind so numerous reports from northern california even southern oregon all the way down through central and southern california reports of flooding 101 closed in multiple spots because basically it had turned into a creek, a fast moving creek. Now, here's where we are right now with that rain pushing in. You can see where that main line and the moisture is now actually really cranking out more snowfall. We're seeing that right here in the Sierra, especially south of the Lake Tahoe area, getting some of those bigger snowfall rates, more intense right there. We're going to be watching for a few more showers coming in. You saw that low still sitting off the coast. So that energy and the instability that comes with it will still bring us more showers today. Driving down here on five, you can see rain is affecting your ride. Some of it could be heavy at times as you make your way southward through Bakersfield and the Central Valley. Down through Los Angeles, we do have a few showers out there right now. It's not raining everywhere, but we'll see more today. And we also have the risk for more thunderstorms again today. There may be some warnings. You might get some hail out of some thunderstorms. There are some strong damaging winds. And there is that isolated tornado risk as well. So watching that for today, this is the forecast here getting into the afternoon hours. You'll see scattered showers continuing right through the area, even up towards Monterey and Oakland and San Jose, more showers here. We cannot cut it off completely, even though it'll be more scattered today. Alex? Well, of course, we've also... The pattern, Stephanie Abrams spoke with Dr. Rick Spinrad, one of the lead experts on climatology, about the wide-reaching impacts. California. Reporter Molly Reel from our CBS partner, KOVR, has a closer look at the damage done to the Sacramento Yacht Club. Yeah, a lot to track here for us. We've been watching all these systems coming into the West, but not all of them have kind of worked their way across the country. Finally getting one of those, and that's going to organize and bring us the severe threat uh, starting really tomorrow night. And well, the chance for thunderstorms, the possibility that we see severe weather, uh, we'll see that in the overnight. Of course, that's always a concern. And in some of the very same spots that with every single severe event that we've seen over the past couple of weeks, and it's been a busy storm track, you're under the gun again. Yeah, this is how it looks like, what it looks like here now Wednesday during the afternoon. You notice there's not a whole lot of activity that's really bubbling up here for us during the afternoon. It's going to take some time for things to really get going here for us as the system organizes. We may be talking about sort of a, a cap in the atmosphere, kind of delaying the thunderstorm activity until later in the day. All right, so that warmth that you're feeling actually is beneficial in this case. We'll see, though, as we get into the overnight time frame, that's when the chance of thunderstorms will be moving in. I mean, Look at the temperatures. Dallas, Houston, back to the 80s. We had 80s over the weekend here, setting mm. some records in southeast Texas. Abilene, San Angelo, 84 degrees. Oof. That'll beat the record from 2017. Yeah, so plenty of warmth out there. Then we'll watch how things progress tomorrow night as we watch some colder air coming in aloft. And that can oftentimes really help to erode that cap in the atmosphere. And that really can allow the thunderstorms to develop. So that is expected tomorrow night. And then we'll watch the activity spread east from there. So the fact that it will be so warm during the afternoon dew points are becoming up too in accordance so we'll, we'll see more instability uh, tomorrow night plus the wind energy so a lot more coming together with that chance of storms from louisiana into mississippi maybe even western tennessee so wednesday evening now we'll start to see some of those thunderstorms getting going this is about nine ish at o'clock and future radar showing you some of those thunderstorms developing parts of arkansas even getting up into missouri as well and then look how everything starts to develop a bit farther to the south heading into thursday morning all right so you wake up on thursday we've got thunderstorms on the move now heading through middle tennessee down 
through much of Mississippi and into Alabama and Georgia with the chance of thunderstorms. We can see strong damaging winds. That's probably the main threat. We'll have to keep an eye out for other hazards too. Yeah, absolutely. So Thursday morning, ongoing rain showers and thunderstorms, and we'll watch how everything moves east. There could be some showers and storms out ahead of sort of the main line of storms, and then that heads towards the coast for Thursday night is moving and then the high winds combined with saturated ground creating a situation that is not good for trees across the state. They are giving way falling to the ground. A reporter Madison Keevy from our CBS partner KOVR shows us the problems it's creating there in Sacramento. Deadly. Uh, as well, there in Sonoma County, last week a two-year-old was killed when a redwood tree fell on his home. Sonoma County fire were out flooding. What is the most imminent concern right now? So the biggest challenge we have is the Russian River. Which Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us this morning. And that advice actually can apply to so many other communities, mm -hmm. too, because up and down the coast, inland, I mean, that's what's so amazing about these series of storms is that it's not just affecting one area and not just the coast. Right, yeah, it's all over out yeah. there. And I still can't get over it. Barricades are up for a reason. I know. I mean, so much can be avoided by... Yeah. Wow, did you see that hulking tree? Yeah. I was reading a lot about the history of the trees in Sacramento, known as the city of trees. They have like a million trees, most of them oak trees. So you think about how big of an oak tree is. Yeah. And they, they generally like the climate there. And they like the wetter winters and the hot, dry summers. But when you do too much at once, like we're getting right now, of mm -hmm. course, they give way. And, and the drought has really taken a toll, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you said it too much too quickly here. And that leads to problems like trees coming down. But also, like we've seen some of the storm reports, Mudslide issues in a number of areas. Uh, Lexington Hills, you had a mudslide blocking our uh, lanes of a road there at Boulder Creek. Again, another mudslide there at Bear Creek Road. So that's been a problem here for us with all this rain. Mudslides, we talked about this becoming a problem, and it no doubt has uh, bared that that result has come through. I mean, it's pretty much no region um, that's not been affected. Uh, we go to King City, mudslides and boulders on the roadway there in Carmel Valley, mud, dirt, and rock on the roadway. Paso Robles, we've got mud across the airport road there. So, I mean, numerous reports mm -hmm. of scenes like this where boulders, trees, mud, etc., slid right onto highways. All right, so let's talk about how these mudslides can come about as you, you deal with heavy rain, and we have no doubt seen that. Again, double-digit rainfall totals that we've had to deal with. So as that rain comes down, starts to collect uh, some of the sediment, the dirt, and then it begins to move down. So the very hilly terrain that we've got here on the West Coast. Yes, and so you get this basically slurry of debris that gets going and can move really fast. In fact, moving at highway speeds coming down the mountain and it picks up everything in its path. So now you're bringing down large boulders, more mud uh, and moving onto roadways, which if you're not expecting it, which most of the time you're not, right. right, that can really be problematic. Exactly. So there's some signs that can happen here prior to a big mudslide taking shape uh, and kind of looking for a little bit of a trickle of mud. That oftentimes can actually come before you get that larger flow of the mudslide taking shape. Yeah, now the flow speed can actually average between 10 to 35 miles per hour, and it can reach over 60 miles per hour. And the CDC reporting an average of 25 to 50 deaths per year. Uh, here in the U.S. because of mudslides. So no doubt they can be uh, dangerous and, yes, deadly. So let's look at what we know right now in terms of the road closures. Highway 1 closed from just south um, of Big Sur to about four miles north of San Simeon. That's a 41-mile closure. That's a long stretch of road here. And because of the ongoing rock slide threat here for us, uh, folks driving around are really advised to just do, basically use alternate routes if you have to get out there and try to travel at this time. Right now, things are looking a bit better. There's still some showers, but we aren't seeing that just steady stream of rain in these areas here uh, around the Monterey area and points to the south. We do still have more showers, though, and you can see pushing through Santa Barbara and Montecito. We've got rain showers out there. A lot of evacuations in Montecito, as we've been reporting. Uh, Los Angeles, uh, not as much in town right now. A few showers outside of town, but there'll be more. I mean, this all is going to swing through today, like you see up here to the north. Well, of course, you can stay prepared for threats wherever they are. Very, very widespread area, and that's what we've got in mm -hmm. California. Could you guys believe, by the way, the rain that we had yesterday and the day before in Ventura and Santa Barbara County? Yeah. I mean, 10 to 15 inches. Mm -hmm. You yes. think you get that from a tropical system, but something coming off the Pacific, that's amazing to me. That speaks to just how intense that atmospheric river was. I mean, that really, the, the, right. the, the ratio. And Jim, did you see the snow report? I mentioned it earlier, 47 inches in 18 hours. And that was up at about 10,000 oh. feet. So, I mean, look, it's high up oh. there, but still, that's two and a half inches per hour for 18 hours. 
Yeah, Jen, that's going to be one of those scenes where they're going to have to dig out chairlifts. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to literally dig out the chairlift to get the ski area to operate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yep. all the ski areas picked up at least another foot of snow, and that just keeps on happening. Uh, Jim, I mean, what, what a storm. And the fact that we have another one similar to it lined up yes. ready to come in in two days. Yeah, I mean, the pattern doesn't break, and that's, and that's really the takeaway here. We may get a... But it's an unwanted family member coming on through. I, I mean, I got to imagine the folks have to be very, very just tired of having to deal with this for, for such a long period of time. Yeah, you know, Alex, that's a great point. Honestly, every everyone that we've on your bulldogs last night, that wasn't even fair. <laughs> hey, I'm basking in it nice right it. now, and I, I don't even know what to say. I'm just I'm living good right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jim, get warm you keep out there. Keep through, brother. Hey, there up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Space Needle looks nice in your sky, but you know, for the most part, the track to these storms have the energy is kind of lifted up like this, and the moisture keeps pointing at California. This next one brings the moisture in a little further north. Yeah, that one looks like a that looks like a pretty monster one already yeah. gathering there in Look, the Pacific. Energy. Yeah, a lot of it here. So yeah, it's just it's just not stopping. We got all these lows showing up because there's just a series of systems just lined up. I mean, look at that one up there. The ready, Gulf of Alaska. Ready to try to move on in. And again, we've got the the moisture streaming its way on in, which aids in the development of the the rain that's heavy at times, and of course, the snow adding up in the mountains. All right. So you see where that Next one, the low moves in to the south, but then a low to the north. And that's going to keep us showery up into parts of mm -hmm. Washington and maybe even Oregon. Absolutely. And so that's this weekend. And then as we get into early next week, another system. This could be the third one now for us. I, I don't even know what the count would be in terms of the, the overall at that point, but certainly double digits, I think, at that point. 10, yeah, 10 or 11, yeah. Yeah, so more of that, and that comes right on into uh, parts of California. So it is not stopping here for us. Little breaks, but for the most part, the stormy pattern remains. All right, so you see how by tomorrow afternoon, the rain is spreading back in. Bay Area, Northern California, again, we get some showers up to the north. Seattle, Portland, showers come your way, continuing, I mean, with almost unrecognizable breaks that come in right. that weekend. There'll be a few, but unfortunately, we got more to come. I'm out the threats from the mid-morning hours and beyond. The Weather Channel will extend our live programming to make sure that your family has the information that you need to stay safe. Not only tracking what's going on on the West Coast, but uh, what translates east as we head on through the coming days, uh, bringing the threat for some severe weather as we head towards the end of the week. Yes, you know, watching all the scenes, evacuations, the stories coming out of California, we can show you as the waters rise, we could see more. You guys have really just been through the gamut, right? Yesterday was a lot of the rain, the, the waters and the rivers and the streams and the creeks, those rising. And then today, at least er earlier this morning, uh, some big winds yeah. have really come on in. Big winds, and it's really interesting. I, I, I never thought there would be one town that endured both problems. So Fenton is the town I'm talking about, guys. It's about 10 miles.